Temp number two here on the uh, USC debut. Just, uh, I mean, can you walk us back a few weeks? Um, please, please don't jinx me. No, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it goes forward, but can you just walk us back a few weeks and explain the roller coaster of what it was like those you know few hours and then you know it's happening it's not happening just tell us start there uh it was just a weird experience all around man like I got that phone call about nine thirty at night uh had gotten done sparring just got home eating like three pounds of food and they're like oh hey if you can make weight you're fighting in the UFC so I spent the next three hours busting my ass you know uh just working, made the weight. We get there, you know, I can't sleep that night. I'm like, oh, crap, it's finally happened, it's finally happened. I've been doing this for like 14 years, it's finally happened. Get there, like, all right, we're doing this, doing this. And like, they stopped me when I got there, like, oh, it's not happening. I'm like, okay, I get it. But like, I weighed in. I was like, okay, it's really happening. And then they're like, uh, it's not gonna happen. So, that sucked, <laughs> that sucked, man. I can't, I can't even uh, begin to explain how much that sucked. Like, you, fight week's already stressful on anything, but like, to be there, to weigh in, to have everything going and then take it away from you fucking sucks. Yeah, who what was the most of your, I don't know, anger, frustration in that moment directed towards? Was it Phil? No, I mean, at first you want to get frustrated at Phil. You want to be mad at Phil. Like, take, you know, like, take the fight. We're fighters, take the fight. But at the same time, man, like, I've been doing this for a long time now. I've got a lot of fights, a lot of experience. I understand now more so, I wish I'd understood earlier that this is a business and you are your brand. And you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I've never spoken to Phil about it, but you know, it could be a, a thousand things. Like you know, he may not have wanted to struggle for the weight for a guy who's coming in fresh. He may not. Uh, if I felt comfortable doing it, I'm not even gonna be mad, man. Because at the end of the day, if I if I go out there and say he gets fucked up, he lost money. That's his brand that's taking a hit. So you get frustrated, you don't get the chance. But like, I'm not gonna hold it against Phil. Everybody's got you know, look out for you. Number one is uh, the rule for this game. Yeah, and I guess uh, if we're trying to look at the positive side here, this couldn't have worked out much better. I mean, you get a little more time. Uh, you fight on this card in this arena. Um, this is a good you know, alternative, right? If the other thing didn't happen, this is pretty nice as well. I laugh, man. I'm like either everybody's like, oh, you know, he, he, he pushed out. I'm like, dude, Phil may be a mad scientist. He may be a genius. Like, we're in Madison Square Garden now. I'm like, it's... I don't know if he had an inkling, but way to go, Phil Hall. I was like, <laughs> I'm not mad at the guy. It's, uh, it's worked out really well, so... If he fell into it, cool. If he uh, planned this, that man is a genius, and I have made a terrible miscalculation. And last thing for me, I mean, what's kind of the goal here for this UFC run? I feel like you probably think this is icing on the cake, considering you know some of the earlier stuff that's happened in your career. Um, to be here, maybe you didn't ever imagine it would happen. So now that you are in the UFC, what do you want to accomplish? Had you asked me that like six years ago, you have a vastly different answer. But uh, I'm 34 now, man. Like, I, luckily for me, I haven't taken too much uh, damage in this sport. I'm still pretty healthy. I'm not walking around with, like, a bunch of knee surgeries and stuff. But uh, I look in the mirror every day. I see a little bit more gray hair. I see uh, a couple more scars adding on to my face. I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to have this 10-year UFC run that I dreamed of when I started. But that's fine. Like, right now, I'm just here to do cool shit and get a lot of money. Uh, right here. Uh, you, you mentioned there's obviously been a long journey to the UFC. I think just fans in general were happy when you got that last minute fight. And then when it was taken away, they kind of felt for you. But now that you're back and you get to fight in Madison Square Garden, have you feel, felt the outpouring of support from the fans? Uh, I really have. I actually felt kind of bad because everybody's like, yay, oh, yay. Anyway, they're going through it with me. And it's, uh, it's really cool to see, you know, you're going to people who hate you and want to see you crash and burn. But I've had a lot of love from uh, people I don't know. Apparently, I have a lot of uh, fans in, like, Turkey and England, which has been a huge outpouring. So, like, thank you guys. Like, much appreciated. But uh, there's been a lot of people who've kind of watched me on this roller coaster. And I've definitely had a roller coaster of a journey so far. And uh, there's a lot of people. It's, it's weird. They're like, you know, win, lose, or draw, man. I'm just glad to see you do it finally because, like, you've been hitting that wall for a long time. So it, it's been really uh, cool to have that support. Who wants to see you crash and burn? You would be surprised. I have made a lot of enemies that I wasn't aware of. I don't know what I did, but I have made a lot of enemies. And like it's, I think it might have been from uh, fighting Magomed twice or whatever, because I have like I'm split down the middle with like Russia. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of Russians in the DMs. Half of Russia loves me. The other half is like, I hope your legs break. And I'm like, all right, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs>